as gym savants, why is it important for you guys to maintain your physiques? Ultimately, I feel great inside of a body that's in shape, mm -hmm. right? So that's where it's at for me. Like, I want to feel good. I want to feel good, look good, woman to be attracted to me. Being in shape for me is a defense mechanism. If you desire to have a different body and I agree with you, am I body shaming? Truthfully, like, we should be in the kindest way acknowledging that about people around us. Like, yo, bro, like, you, you should be in better shape. Beyond looking better, I know it's gonna make you better. Mm -hmm. I know you're gonna feel better about yourself. Better. Mm -hmm. I know you're gonna be happier like this. I know you're gonna attract more people. I know you're gonna open more doors for yourself. I know that you're gonna be more healthy. And I've never seen anybody get in shape and say they regret it. I'm Simeon Pando. Tank. I'm Melvin Gregg. This is another episode of Nice and Me. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. Yo, what's the deal, y'all? Hope all is well. Welcome back to another episode. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. And this is another episode of the number one podcast in all of Los Angeles. Nice and neat. How y'all doing, brothers? Okay, let, wait, wait. Let's put the camera on Duke. Let's do it. Oh, man. He bringing the shades out. Yeah, he bringing oh, the shades oh, out. Oh, man. He's that guy today. Yeah. Wow, let's do it. Okay. 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 Now we can resume. I got sensitive okay. eyes, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I got, I got something called PRK, so my shit's sensitive. So, okay. Okay. But what are we talking about today, bro? We, man, you know what? We're just going to jump straight into it. Man, we're talking about the importance of taking care of yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Taking care of yourself um, financially. That's important. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, taking care of yourself physically. Like, we hear all the time how people speak about, like, you know, I don't necessarily have to be in the best shape. And, you know, I, I think people who take their shape take it too serious. They're taking it too serious. And, you know, you're shaming people who don't want to. You know what? This episode is not about that. This episode is about the people who do take their physicality seriously. Mm -hmm. This episode is also uplifting the people that do, and it's not to shame anybody. Also, hard work has never ran away from, results have never ran away from hard work, I should mm -hmm. say. So like, I also think, I'll say like, when you look at somebody in their stature, and you're able to see the hard work they put in, it does make you more curious about a person. It, it does, does make you more curious about a person. It makes you more curious That's about a, a person. It makes you want to understand their mindset to even get to the space to be able to work out like that. So therefore, there are benefits that come from just looking good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm not even talking about like attraction. attraction. I'm talking about just looking good. If somebody is a physical specimen, you want to be like, man, this guy's focused. Yeah. And if yep. he focuses on this, he can focus on this because we believe one way you do anything, the way you do everything. That's how you do everything. Right? So, fellas, as gym savants, right? Why is it important for you guys to maintain your physiques? Mm. For me, it's pretty easy. Um, for like shallow reasons, I like the way I look in the mirror, you know? Um, I think that is like my biggest motivation is like looking in the mirror and seeing how my physique is measuring, you know what I mean, in comparison to where it's been. And that kind of keeps me on track. The other thing, so one is like, just like liking how I look. The other thing is knowing that for the most part, being in good shape generally means that I'm more healthier than not. You know what I mean? Not <laughs> it means I'm more healthy than you. <laughs> facts, facts, generally, facts. Generally, 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 generally speaking, yeah. like, honestly, we don't know yeah. what's going on the insides, the inner workings of people's bodies. But generally speaking, you know what I mean. Someone who's in shape, they're going to be a lot more healthier. Um, and then, obviously, I think you touched on it too, bro. It's just like people, the curiosity, the curiosity from people from others leads to opportunities. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I, I've gotten I've, I've gotten countless opportunities in my life. In my 20s, 30s, just off of my physique alone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And some of those opportunities have nothing to do with me even moving my physical body. You know what I mean? It's just, man, I look good. So if someone thinks highly of me. Mm -hmm. They think, man, I got a good program. I must have good habits. Shit. What's up? What else? Man, let me give you this opportunity. So for me, it's those three things. And I, honestly, it's just like, why don't you want to be in shape? Mm -hmm. Is a question that I ask myself. 
You know what I mean? And when I'm thinking about eating, consuming calories or staying up late or drinking, not drinking, it's like I'm always thinking about how it's going to affect me tomorrow and what I'm going to yeah. look like and how I'm going to feel. Ultimately, I feel great inside of a body that's in shape. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's where it's at for me. Like I want to feel good and being in shape makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Plain and, Plain and simple. simple. Plain and simple. I want to feel good. I want to look good. All right. I want my woman to be attracted to me. All right. I want to be able to function properly. I want to be strong. Being in shape for me is a defense mechanism. Okay. So whether people know I can fight or I got weapons, my body is my weapon if they're concerned. It look like it. Right? Yep. <laughs> so, so it's a defense mechanism. So even if pe people, people may try me, people may look and say, you know what? Like, I don't like him or I want to do this, but ah, uh, let me not, let me not play. Cause physically, I'm in better shape than majority of the people I'm around, all right? Or you're gonna come across, 95% of the people, right? So that 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 part right there is the defense mechanism. It gives me confidence, all right? Yeah. But not just confident, not just confidence from a standpoint of I love the way I look. Yes, that's true. That's that's true. But it gives me confidence because when you see someone who has a nice physique, chances are they actually work for it. Yep. Okay. So when you go through the process and it's a rigorous process of discipline and commitment and going to the gym day in, day out and being consistent, okay, you prove to yourself that you can do hard things, all right? And that's what gives me confidence. I know that in other circumstances, I can do hard things because I've, I have physical evidence, proof that I've done it. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that kind of interesting how... Um Doing something physical gives you confidence in every other area of your life. Yes, because doing something and getting doing something and growing something from something that's not a lot to something that is that you actually wanted to accomplish is manifesting, right? It's it's, yeah. it's like um, it's your 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 goals and your desires materializing, mm -hmm. you know. And when you get to take an idea, maybe you want an idea for your body, and you got a roadmap of how you should eat and how you should go to the gym. And it looks daunting at first, but then when you get inside the process and you just take it day by day and day by day. And then through that process, you're able to develop consistency. You know what I'm saying? You built those habits and you built that, you know, you built that momentum to keep going. Duke, you know? tell, us what, what a, tell us what a roadmap to getting in shape and getting the, your desired body kind of looks Man, like. Man, so, okay, I'm gonna give you two roadmaps. I'm gonna give you a roadmap that is my roadmap as someone who's been playing sports my whole life, right, mm -hmm. for an athlete, and I'm going to give you a roadmap that everyone should take that is going to guarantee you get the results that you want to get to, okay? So my roadmap from playing sports, right, I don't have to do the, I don't have to go figure out what my BPI, I mean, my, my body fat percentage yeah. is. I don't have to go figure those things out. I don't have to go through a, a process of, you know, assessment in the gym because I've been training for so long. I know how to do every lift in the gym. Yep. So for me, it's just, all right, I focus on getting my endurance up so I could push through my workouts longer. That's my process. I mm -hmm. do that by um, gradually going into the gym and gradually doing things. So I don't, if I haven't worked out in a month, let's say I haven't worked out in a month, I wouldn't go in there and try to run two miles on the treadmill, try to bench 20, 225, 10 times. Everything will be just like, okay, what is my base foundation of, like, how what, how can I, how much can I lift while I still feel good? And I just do that for a week or two and then gradually get into it, right? Cardio, strength training, and I meal prep, okay? And when I meal prep, I can, I understand how much calories I'm burning a day. So I can, under, I understand how much calories I need to drop weight and stuff like that, okay? If I'm talking, if you just do that, you will be good, all right? But if I'm telling someone who's not a gym person and someone comes to me and is like, yo, what I need to do? I'm saying, okay, the first thing you need to do is understand your calories. Well, first of all, you need to understand what's your goal. First of all. First of all. First and foremost. What is your goal? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to gain weight? Do you want to bulk up? Do you want to get six pack? All right? Do you want to grow your legs? Whatever the case may be, is what's your goal? All right? And then you got to get your numbers. How do you get your numbers? Weight, mm -hmm. body fat percentage. All right? Those are very important. Um, TDEE, -E, mm -hmm. right? Figure out like what your daily, um, your total daily expenditures, energy expenditure is, yep. right? And all that is is how much energy does your body need to operate? 
Yep. That's on a day to day basis. That's it. Okay. Where can somebody get a test like that done at? Caloriecalculator.net. Straight like that. Calorie is free. You just put your info in. Caloriecalculator.net. And then it'll tell you exactly, it'll give you an estimate, I should say, of what that number is. And when you get that number, then you got to work from there. So now it's just like, oh, I have my, so for instance, my number at 35 years old, someone who's six feet, 210, I'm working out five times a week. My number is probably like 3,400 calories that my, my body is burning every day. So think about your body as a business, mm -hmm. right? And your calories, like the operating expense of your business is the money that it needs to stay afloat. Yep. All right. The operating expense of my body is 3,400 calories. A calorie is just a unit of energy. Yep. All right. So that's what it takes. So then once you get that number in, you need to know it. So let's say you want to lose weight. You need to know how much calories do I need to eat every day in order to lose weight gradually. Yep. That number has to be under that. It has to be under. It has, it has to be in that caloric deficit. It has to be under it. Now, if I want to gain weight, the number has to Surplus. be above it. Yep. Okay. So first thing is that. And then you get the plan. Which mindset, I should say, but mindset, I, we could do all day, go all day for that. Then you get a plan, and your plan needs to be, hey, yo, if you want to get lose weight, most people want to lose weight. Yep. Most people are overweight. Let's just say that most people are overweight, and most people want to lose weight. So if you want to lose weight, you're gonna have to go and 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 prioritize strength training, okay? So you could build muscle and burn fat. It's yep. the quickest way to do it. Yep. All right. It's gonna be hard to just like, and that's why you see a lot of people just doing treadmill workouts and stuff like that and, not and don't work right they, they be skinny fat and it just don't work yep mm -hmm. all right so you want to <laughs> i'm saying this is how you do it though right and this is this works for 99 percent of people and if you strength train you're going to be able to be younger longer yep okay so um so i'm gonna pause you right there go ahead brother omar you said caloric deficit right mm -hmm. as duke was talking about the calories that you have to, that he expels, and also the calories that have to go into your body, right? So caloric deficit, define that for us, and then also let us know about the type of foods that make sense within that deficit. Yeah, so a caloric deficit is literally someone consuming less calories than that they're burning, right? So let's just say uh, Duke is... Uh, let's use that 3,500 number. 3,400. 3, he needs 3,400 for mm -hmm. the day, right? But he's trying to lose weight. He needs to be in a caloric deficit. He needs to be consuming less than 3,400 calories a day in order to maintain or even achieve his goal at the long term at the, in the 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever that is, right? Um, if I mean, now everyone is different, right, about in terms of foods. But if you are trying to be in a caloric deficit, you want to stick with whole foods, right? Real whole foods. You want to stay away from processed foods. You want to stay away from the fatty meats. You want to eat lean meats. Like I don't eat meat, but if I was someone that eat meat, I'd be looking at something like 99% lean ground beef, ground turkey. You know what I mean? Uh, chicken breast, uh, bison meat, like the leanest meats, the leanest cuts. Fish. Like fish. Fish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, of course. Of course, fish. You know what I mean? Um, these type of foods that you want to, that you want to lean into that are going to help you, uh, be in that caloric deficit. You also want to stay away from like heavy starchy foods, right? Me personally being plant-based, I'm going to always recommend the people that I coach that I work with, instead of eating rice, eat lean system quinoa, something that's a complete protein. It's got all nine amino acids. That's what makes the protein complete, right? So instead of having a carb like rice, which is empty, right? It's just an empty carb, which mm -hmm. is just adding on to, to your calories. But add something like... Uh, a quinoa, which is going to be less in calories, higher in protein. Um, it's going to be better for you. It's going to be a lot easier for your body to digest. Um, I would lean into healthier fats, avocados, uh, um, coconut um, oil, uh, olive oil, peanut butter, right? Think more fruits. Mm -hmm. I would be, I would start my day with fruits and I would encourage all of my clients and the people that I'm coaching, yo, this is how we're going to break our fast. We're going to break our fast with fresh fruits. Why are we going to break our fast with fresh fruits? Because when we wake up in the morning, we're still in the, the digestion process. So what I want to do is add foods that are going to help facilitate yesterday's waste out of my body. All of these things are important in terms of moving weight off of you, mm -hmm. right? If you, if you're consuming protein 
and carbs, which are considered builders, what I like to call builders in the body, and you're not adding enough things that are helping moving things out of the body, well, now we have created a basic tra traffic jam inside of your colon, right? So this is how people walk around feeling bloated. You're feeling bloated, you're carrying extra weight naturally. So I would lean into those type of things. Um, also, I would increase my water, my hydration intake, right? And I don't want to be drinking calories. I want to stay away from the soda, stay away from the juices. I don't want to be drinking alcohol. All of these things are just calories that you're drinking. We don't want to drink calories. We want to eat calories, right? So those are things that I... Why don't we want to drink calories? Why don't you want to drink calories, yeah. bro? Bro, it's just, is, it, is it because we can't keep track of it? Like You can't, you can't keep track of it, and it's just to eat... That's it. Yeah. That's it. You can't keep track of it. It's yeah. an easy way. It's an easy way to consume freaking uh, 750 calories in a sitting by drinking two cans of Coca-Cola. Without any nourishment for your body. Without any nourishment. It didn't do anything for you. It didn't hydrate you. It didn't fill, it didn't fill you, your cup in terms of like giving you fuel. All it did was give you a quick spike of, of caffeine, which like really just dehydrated you and then threw off your pH balance. Does that cut into your caloric? Your caloric? caloric deficit deficit it's adding to it not those are calories okay those are calories so when you and everyone's thinking about the food that they eat and they're only adding those things those are things that you got to add into your in, into your daily expenditure what what am i consuming not just eating but what am i drinking mm -hmm. all of those things matter people don't be adding those things in there and they're, yeah. they're wondering why they can't lose weight yeah yeah you so know what, what I mean? it, it sounds like to me i mean truth be told as you're saying like you got to pay attention to that your your calories and not necessarily not necessarily saying you have to be a stickler but you need to pay attention to what's going into your body but to me it sounds like it's a lifestyle right and i hear a lot of times where people are saying hey i'm going out of town or i want to get ready for this and you know i got 30 days or i even got 60 days right what is, what is why is it so important more so to create it to be a lifestyle and you could use your 30 days to put yourself in overdrive while you're already operating within the lifestyle as opposed to just saying hey yo I got 30 days and I want to get in shape and I want to go back to my old life yeah because you make it situational you make it seasonal and it's not sustainable yeah you make it seasonal and it's like it's, and you will never get the results that you really want yep there's no way you can get the results you truly want. If you took that same energy in that 30 days and you spread it across a year, like you will look like how you want to look like forever, you know, and you'll be able to maintain that forever. That's why it's important. But if you just you if you just do it for 30 days, that's not even long enough to build a habit. Mm -hmm. Like they say 21 days for a habit, but you really need like 60 something to for real build a habit. You know, and even that 60 days, that's just a, that you just getting started. Yep. Your body, like it's taken us years and years and years and years to develop physically. All right. It's taken, you know how it is. You work out, work out, work out, work out. And it takes three days to get out of shape. You, and you've been working for months. Right. Yeah. You take, you work out for months, bro. You do everything right. It take three days. That three days turn. You know. You know that three days does. It says, "All right, you know what? I had a taste of that. Let me just three more weeks. Now you got to reset." But if you just learn how to work hard, eat right, consistently over time, and then take micro breaks, what what would you consider a micro break? A micro break. Has a little bit of a tongue twister. Yeah, I say that's just like balance. It's just like eighty twenty. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and, and he's saying micro break, but I know he's not even talking like a break. Like, yeah. no, he's just talking about I'm ha I have balance within my lifestyle. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, throughout the week, throughout the week, man, I'm locked in, I'm focused. You know what I mean? But on Friday night, I go on a date, man, I have fun, I do my thing. You know what I mean? There, I think, I think we all need balance within within our lifestyle. We don't want these uh, rigorous routines to be so mundane that it just it, it causes us to be uninspired. No, mm -hmm. I need something that make me feel alive and feel and have fun. You know what I mean? Because that's like that's normal, and I think that's what actually helps me personally stay on track too. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, man, I had a I had a fun night last night, or I had a nice little cheat day. You know what I mean? The other day, it's time to get back on track. You know what I mean? And even when you start doing things, when things when these habits turn into a, a legitimate routine, these habits that you develop turn into a routine. You could feel it. You could feel like when you do have these cheat days, they won't even feel the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? I shouldn't even. Be like, ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, like Thanksgiving, you'd be like, bro, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm tripping. Yeah, you Why did I do it. that? You know what I mean? I didn't even need to do that. I was really overeating. You know yeah. what I mean? So now, now that the day is over, I'm right back into it. And that's wow. what I think that's what we really want to 
accomplish. You want to, like Duke is saying, you want to build these habits so much to, to the point they become your routine. Mm -hmm. The problem is most people are bowing out before it even turns into that. Yeah. You know what I mean? They get to that 60 days. Hey, I reached my challenge. I'm good. It's like, bro, you only been working out for 60 days in your entire life. You know what I mean? You think you good off of that? Nah. I feel like the, the like, we see those challenges like 75 hard, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like those are to jumpstart the routine. I don't think it's to be, yeah. okay, I did 75 and I'm done. For it's sure. like, okay, I did 75 and I don't have to go as hard, but now I'm in the flow yep. of constantly doing this, yep. right? So speaking to just like the break, right? Mm -hmm. Duke, you said a few weeks ago you took a week off from just working out and it felt great, mm -hmm. right? Like, man, I really, really needed that. What was the importance of that for you? The importance was rest. You need rest to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just it's plain and simple, right? Rest is, it allows my muscles to recover and my mind to recalibrate. So I step outside of the gym because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. I need that break, that mental break. Now, I don't think everyone should take breaks. I don't, not not like I don't think everyone should take breaks, but I think that not everyone should take frequent breaks. OK, I believe that, yo, taking breaks like some people will work only hard during the week and on the weekend, they won't work at all. Mm -hmm. All right. The weekend is where you do the most damage. Yeah. You're right. The, the weekend is where you do the most damage to your body. So someone like me could take a break on the weekend because I'm so conditioned to work out and eat right. And I, I could tell you exactly what I ate every single day. Yep. All right. Most people can't do that. So mm -hmm. I would advise most people to know take the weekend and work through the weekend and just trust me on this one once you work through the weekend and you do it long enough you'll get to a point where you can actually see that you need a break right but right now you you just feel like you need the break just because the weekend is there and we've been conditioned to relax on the weekends yeah that's just how it is right but when you're really trying to get in shape because most people aren't when you're really trying to get in shape you should take you should work out on the weekend maybe a weekend warrior you should yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like when people will say, well, take a break, take a break. Yeah, rest. But you should figure out a way to get the most out of your workout routine, you know, and exercise as much as possible. And here's the thing, too, with that, too, is like every day doesn't need to be extreme balls to the wall. For sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're just talking about consistent movement, movement sure. consistent movement over a long period of time. That's it. So on the weekends. It don't gotta. It, it could it, be a family walk, man. It could be a get outside, walk. man. Play with your dog. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Th that, man. Just activity. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least twenty minutes of some type of movement. You know what I mean? And it would be great if you could get outdoors. You know what I mean? That would be awesome. So, but you don't need to be. Oh man, every day I get into the gym, I gotta be there for sixty yeah. minutes or longer. Yeah, yeah. And if I don't, I'm a failure. Yeah, yeah, nah, yeah. that's not, that's that's not it at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I would rather take a consistent thirty minutes. Yeah. over someone going an hour today 45 minutes this day then i don't know 20 here yeah. no nah, i'd rather consistent 30 minutes yeah. of four days a week you know what i mean i feel like that would yield more results than being inconsistent with the times of going to the gym mm -hmm. and that's why it's important to know your numbers too again because when you know your numbers even cheat days fall within the parameters of mm -hmm. getting to your goals yep. mm -hmm. right yep. If my number is 3,400 and I wake up in the morning, I'm like, you know what? I could stretch it a little bit to like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock to eat because my first meal could be something that's heavy. Yep. But that that first meal is still something like, I don't know what's heavy, like 800, 900 calories. Yeah, that's heavy. That's heavy, right? Yep. So that could be something like a, a cheap meal that's delicious that is, if I eat it too much, I eat another one that's unhealthy. Yep. But it's that that's the balance right there, but it still falls underneath you know, my total like energy expenditure, right? So things like that are important to know, you know, your your numbers. Like the, the scientific part of it is one thing, all right? But like just the mindset mm -hmm. part of it is another thing. I don't want to talk about the science because the science could confuse people. Sometimes people, it's intimidating, Yeah, right? For sure. But like, it, you don't have to, know, like you, you know what to do. You can tell somebody, hey, yo, this is what I did. When, mm -hmm. I, when I went in your shape, this is what I do. And no science, no numbers. I just know this is what I do. Yeah. I run on a treadmill for this long. If I really want to, if I really want to get in shape, I'm running a treadmill for this long. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Right. So people need to adapt that mindset of, yo, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to get in shape, and not 
treat getting in shape and fitness like it's like negotiable. Mm -hmm. Because we're treating it too negotiable because we're using other things like, oh, well, I'm making money. Or, well, I'm in love. I got a husband. I got a girl. My girl like it. Right? So we're putting all these, we're using all these excuses to, and we're hiding behind excuses so we don't have to do the work in the gym. Yeah. Okay? But. Or, or and, and honestly, like you're talking about calories, I tell people, put the fork down. Put the fork down, bro. That's, you could actually honestly make more changes than you think. Yes. In the kitchen. Yes. Yep. Before you do them in the, in the gym. For Seriously. Sure. That's first. Yep. The problem is, is that many people just don't know what to do inside the kitchen. You know what I mean? And many people result to fast food, making poor choices. You know what I mean? And so that's why it's so important for like what Duke was mentioning earlier is to have a plan. You know what I mean? Literally plan out your, out your meals. Think about at the top of the week, think about, hey, what do I want to eat this week? And even if you don't know specifically like every meal, well, okay, I know I, I eat these things, so I should have these things prepared. We all know what we like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We know what works for us. And if we don't, well, then that's another conversation. But if you know like, hey, I, I like ground turkey. I like chicken breast and I like salmon. All right, well, then those things should be made up at the beginning of the week so you can have them to readily accessible mm -hmm. so you don't have to make a bad decision. The mm -hmm. problem is we make poor decisions because we're not prepared. <laughs> unprepared. We're, we're unprepared. Yep. So, of course, you're going to make a bad decision. It's really hard to make a bad decision when you got the shit prepared for you in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just going to, even if I don't want it, man, it's right there. I'm just going to grab it. You I eat it, and before it. you know it, hey, you fool. And, hey, yeah, it's I don't want nothing else. Yep. And it's good. I didn't even really want it, but I ate it. I so. didn't really want it, yeah, but I ate it, and, you, and I'm full. Yeah. I'm and, cool. truth, and truth be told, satisfied. you get so monotonous when you're eating like that to where you be like, yo, I'm actually good, but I should be eating. So let me just go ahead and warm that up. Yes. Warm that up. Yes. I'm good, but I should be eating. Yeah. I know. Let I know what the goals are. Ah, and it helps you. It actually helps you eat yes mm -hmm. not just not eat but it helps you eat when you don't yeah. feel like eating because mm -hmm. that's important. that's actually very unhealthy as well yes. and i had that during my fitness journey at one point in time to slow your metabolism i was down. working out a lot and not eating uh -huh. i remember omar but hey bro you need to eat bro yeah uh -huh. you need to eat like i'm getting shredded but it's like it's not good it's not it's not yeah. i need to eat my muscles weren't able to grow in the yeah, water. Yeah, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because when you don't replenish your body after you're working out, your body it, it starts eating itself. It has. It's looking for a food source. Mm -hmm. So after a while, if there's nothing that's put inside of it. Okay, what is it going to start eating away at? Your muscles, because that's where it's at. All right. So that's why it's so important. That's the, the scientists will tell you, and you can look this up. Don't 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 uh, trust me. Do your own research. But look, this is a fact. Right. It is important for you to fuel your body 20 to 30 minutes after you're finished eating, after you're finished working out. Because if you don't, that's exactly what's going to happen. So someone like you, some people who have a problem with eating or who are hard eaters, mm -hmm. who be working out and haven't seen no gains, that's why. There's not, there's not many changes happening because your body doesn't have nothing to pull from. You got to feel it properly with the right nutrition proper nutrition and timing is everything knowing when to eat is 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 imperative you know what i mean mm -hmm. like knowing when to eat knowing when not to eat is important mm -hmm. these things are important like you can't just be willy-nilly and just doing things at any time of the, any hour of the day and then expecting to have these amazing results it doesn't work like that mm -hmm. it's actually pretty pretty freaking simple like the blueprint is the same blueprint it's been for freaking hulk hogan back in the 80s <laughs> as it was for freaking arnold schwarzenegger back in the 70s as it is for us in in the 2000s and 20s. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Nothing has changed, right? The, it, even as research has more research has become available, more science has become available. The principle is the principle. The principle is the principle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Consume less calories, move more. You know what I mean? Don't eat after eight. Like these are simple, basic yeah. things that people just choose to ignore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at some point, people just got to stop making the choice. Like people know the information. People know. Like, it, like, even people that are listening and watching this podcast right now, they're like, I've heard this before. Yeah. This is not new information yeah. to them. Man, I, I was talking to uh, one of my client chefs, really big, really, really, really good chef, really, really good chef, man. And I was talking to him and he was actually explaining to me that he doesn't really, he doesn't eat crazy amounts of food, right? He was like, it's no need to, man. You just kind of replenish your body and that's really all we need. He said most of us, he said not most of us, all of us, we actually suffer from a food addiction. Mm -hmm. We have a food addiction. We're just so used to eating all the time 
that our body doesn't even necessarily want food. It's just it happens in our mind yes. and we say we got to go and get food. Yes. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys feel about that? I agree. That's a, that's a fact. I agree. Strongly agree with that, bro. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree because I experience I, I fast. Right. So when you fast, you experience all kind of different emotions that go through. Yeah. You're like, yo, am I really am I hungry or am I hungry? What's what's happening here? You know what I mean? So I I, I agree I agree with that one one thousand percent. Most of us are just have that addiction. A lot of us have parasites that are craving things inside of our stomach that we only know about due to just a uh, uh, processed foods, uh, sugar, refined sugar, you know, heavy oils, all of these things that we love. All these things that we love, you know. Huh? Bomb. Bomb. Of course they're bomb. I'm not saying that they're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? I will be, I'll be lying to you guys if I said I didn't enjoy these things. But for us to not have a basic understanding of what these things are doing to our bodies is what's really hurting us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you putting these things in your body and not understanding the trauma it's causing to your colon. You know what I mean? Your intestines. Things that matter. Things that actually help push things out. Like what goes in has to come out. But if those things aren't functioning properly because, you know... Things are backed up because of how we eat. You know, it's going to cause issues. It's going to cause us not to be able to to shape the weight that we want and not acquire the physique that we ultimately desire. Mm. There's a mental component that you were talking about, man, that's holding us back, most of us. And one, it's our, our approach to food. It's I want to eat to be entertained. Mm-hmm. I want to eat to be entertained and not to be fueled. All right. Mm-hmm. I want to eat to suppress my anxiety. Mm-hmm. All right. I want to eat because I'm bored. Mm-hmm. I want to eat because I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. So if you don't, okay, so you ask what I do. Well, first of all, you got to figure out an alternative for the triggers. What's the alternative when you're stressed? Because for most of us get stressed, we want to go to the fridge and eat something. Mm-hmm. So we're going to continue to eat something when we're stressed until we figure out an alternative. So now when I'm stressed, maybe I go read a book. I'm not saying you should read, but I'm just I'm just saying that, that could, that's a thing. Yep. A, health, a right? healthier alternative. Yeah, yep. here's a, here's another um, trigger. What what happens when we stress? We start scrolling on our phone. Yep. The same way we have food addiction is the same way we have phone addiction. Yep. All right. So so one thing, if both well, of those, they, they both they both both of them release dopamine to the brain, and, and we go. That's ba- the problem. And here's the thing: we go back and forth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We go, we go back and forth. So I just ate. Okay, I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. Get my phone. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at my phone. I'm stressed. I go to my go to go to the food. And right? we talk. We talking about food, and then that's what show up on your phone. And then yep. that's what happened. Come on. So anxiety, stress, overwhelm, um, lack of clarity, clutter. Even even your space can make you feel like you gotta go get some food because you can't even think straight because your shit's so cluttered. Mm-hmm. Yep. So all these things are triggers to make you go to the to the thing that the thing that you've made a part in your life. And it's because when we since we were kids, we've been fed the fast food, the sugars, the cereal, all these things have become a habit of, of us now. These are our habits. So now we're full blown adults and we can't kick it. You know that's why and you, and- the the reason why we can't kick it is because a lot of the things that are in it are addictive. Are addictive. Yeah. yeah. So sugar, salt being the two main cul- culprits. Too. You know what I mean? Bro, so growing up, we used to have a lot of juice in the house, right? Mm-hmm. Growing up, just like had a lot of juice in the house all the time. And, you know, you'd be at home bored and you used to be sitting there and you'd be like, I'm going to go get a cup of juice. Yes. I don't keep juice in my house for that reason. I don't yes. keep juice in my house. Because I would drink juice all day. Yes. Yep. Because that is my coping mechanism it's yes. like i'll oh, just go to the refrigerator grab, grab some juice and just it's just just something yes. drink a little something mm-hmm. sweet you know like because yes. and the importance of not eating your calories is, i mean not, not drinking your calories is a lot of people think because i drunk it it's not going to sit on my body the same way so instead of me going in there and eating some i just drink some juice and it'll just give me this little sugar that i need right it's better than eating the snickers but it's like actually if you drink two cups yeah, of juice, bro, that. yeah, it depends on how For much sure. juice you're drinking. Like, sure. bro, hey, like, it's not. Yeah. The amount of sugar that's in there, we seen that video when Buddy was pouring the sugar out. That, that, I think that's another thing that too, and those type of videos are so great because mm-hmm. like for the person who has a hard time understanding like how much sugar is in something, we need visuals. Right. And if all of us could see when we look at the back of labels and we see 56 grams of Numbers, sugar. We don't understand it. We don't understand that. You're like, 56 grams? Cool. 
But if I pour out 56 grams of sugar on this scale right here and you see it, you would never take it. You would never do it. And that's the problem. The problem is we don't have a, a basic understanding. That's 56 grams of sugar is crazy. If y'all know what a gram is. Bro. Yeah. And I, bro, I'm not talking. I'm not talking. Fifty six grams. Simply, of sugar. simply crazy. lemonade. It probably got close to that. Yeah. Coca Cola probably got close to that. Nah, you know what I mean? For real. The problem is, is that like, and this is this is like a flaw in our educational system. We don't have a basic understanding of nutrition, which we should. You know what I mean? It's like simple things of like how to understand, like how to properly fill our body. They, they, when you when you control the food, you can control the people. So yeah. they can't. So they're not going to give us that. They're going to make us go search for that individually. Yeah. So like I implore, implore all of us to like do your own research and like really try your best to understand nutrition. You know what I mean? Fellas, mm -hmm. let me ask you guys before we get out of here. What are, what are, do you guys have any programs that we can put in our link in our bio or even, matter of fact, even just food guys, simple food guys, simple workout guys that we could put in our link in our bio to be able to help people I, find anything. Bro, I'm sure Duke has some. I got a free seven-day plant-based meal guide, bro, that give people basic instructions, a shopping list on just how to get started eating plant-based. So, like, if that's something you, if that's something you guys are interested in, I'll drop it in the in um in our description so you guys could go go download that. Because uh, again, my biggest thing is like. I realize that we don't really, we don't understand. So what I'm trying to do is teach people from a basic, like ground level, you know what I mean? Of how to like properly feel yourself. So yes. Yeah. And um, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So if you are interested, go ahead, click the link, set up a call, um, go through your numbers, put your plan together and go from there. But it's really important, bro. Because sometimes people would try to shame people for wanting to be in shape. Some people will try to make you feel bad that you don't want to be fat or you want to have a six pack or you want to like be at the top of the line physically, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that it's okay to be that. Straight up. It's I'm doubling okay. down on that too. It's okay to it's okay just just like, just like you want to be rich, it's okay to proclaim that you want to make a lot it's of money. Funny. Everybody want to be in great financial shape. Right. But for some reason when it comes to physical shape, People, people, I don't got to be like that. Nah, people do want to, pe people absolutely do want to be in shape. They just don't, if they say it, they got to work to it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just, don't want to confess it. I mean, you can hide your finances daily. Yeah, exactly. You can hide a, uh, You can hide that daily. Exactly. But you show up as you every single day. So you're going to be like, nah, I don't care to be in shape because like, if you say you want to be in shape, other people have to hold you accountable to that. Mm -hmm. And are you willing to work for that? Mm-hmm. Nah, but you, of course, you think guys don't look at you and be like, damn, I, I would love to have his body. Mm -hmm. I don't think women look at, hey, yo, I would love to have her body. Yep. For sure. Everyone wants it. People may not say it because people are comfortable being comfortable. Yep. And I think that everyone, like, it's not a sin for you to want to look better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just like, nah, everyone should just love themselves. And yes, everyone should love who they are. They should. But it's not a sin to want to look better. You can acknowledge that, hey, yo, I feel out of shape. I don't like the fat I'm carrying. It's okay to acknowledge that. If you are happy like that, then great. I mean, truthfully, like we should be in the kindest way acknowledging that about people around us. Like, yo, bro, like you, you should be in better shape. You know what I mean? And that shit is delicate because like you dealing with people's like um, emotions, like they could be emotionally yeah. unstable in that space. But why are we quick to to call everything else out but we don't but when it comes to people's weight we tiptoe around it what is that do we know that do we feel that people are just insecure about that and that's a touchy topic yeah i think so i mean so when they say like when when people will say body shaming right and i'm i'm trying to understand the word i'm trying to understand this when people say body shaming are you shaming the body that somebody desires, are you shaming the body that they're, th in. That they're in? You're shaming, shaming the, the body, body they're in. in. Okay, so if you desire to have a different body and I agree with you, am I body shaming? No. No. Right? But the, the, the premise is, yo, wait till that person says that first. Wait till this person says this is what they want to do first. Mm. Don't just offer, don't just offer your opinion about, I think you will look better like this. Okay. But beyond looking better, I know it's going to make you better. 
Mm-hmm. I know you're going to feel better about feel yourself. Better. Mm-hmm. I know you're going to be happier like this. I know you're going to attract more people. I know you're going to open more doors for yourself. I know that you're going to be more healthy. I know you're going to be more confident in yourself when you look in the mirror. I know you're going to look better in those clothes you want to buy. I know you're going to ha- be less stressed about fitting into certain things. These are things that I know will happen. Facts. And I've never seen anybody get in shape and say they regretted it. Never. In my life. The only regret you be having when you get in shape is like, dang, I got to keep doing this. But and that's not even that's a not a regret. That's not even a that's regret. Just a, that's, just a, that's just a responsibility. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not a regret. So, yeah, I, w- I would ask. I-, I want everybody to be in shape. You know what I'm saying? T- don't take this shit serious, man. Take this shit serious. Um, fellas. No, man, you guys really gave a lot of information today. I feel like people can go back and watch this episode and get everything they need to at least start the journey right those links are going to be in the bio so people can be able to if you want to eat plant-based you can definitely go and tap in with omar on that if you want to have a one-on-one call okay. duke are you training women as well or is that just strictly for me i'm training anybody that wants to get in shape all right anybody that wants to get in shape anyone that is serious about getting in shape and wants to commit to themselves then i'm training for sure because people need it man sometimes pe- people just need accountability people need a plan and just people need just that that push. So mm-hmm. if you want to get in shape and you're serious and you re- and getting in shape and being fit is a priority to you, then yeah, I'm training you. Okay. Um, with that said, man, listen, if you are watching this, man, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, drop a comment, let us know what you thought about the episode. Go ahead, take a photo of the TV that you're watching, screenshot, post on your story, tag us. All right, but before we jump up out of here, all right, I want to give a special shout out to our our realtor, Joby. You can follow him at Joby Battle Group. He's the one that's blessing us with these properties. Mm-hmm. Much love. Go follow him. Tap in with him. He's going to handle everything you need. All right? Much love. Much gratitude. I'm Duke. I'm Omar. I'm Jalan. This is another episode of Nice and Neat, and that's that on that. Peace. Hey, hey, I'll be the one to take the risk to go and get them bands. I'll be the one to never sit and go and make a plan. Knowing my mother getting old and I don't got no time. Gotta keep a couple for the road, the rest get left behind. Yeah. To the hundreds, pledge allegiance, I stand. I'm going pro four in the fucking white sand.